it's morning on an early spring day and I'm here on my plot, my allotment plot. I can hear some roosters crowing over there in the plantation and some more birds down there. It's beautiful being up here. And I think these spring mornings really gives a lot of enthusiasm for us gardeners to get back into our gardens, but also if you're a new gardener or you want to start a new garden, this is the time of the year that you're thinking about doing it. What I'd like to share with you today is the story behind how I created my vegetable garden and also tips on how you can create your own. Now, the story of my plot doesn't begin here on this particular area. So this plot that I have right now, I've only had since 2015 and I started working it quite slowly. When I started here at the Laxey allotments, my plot was further down the field and I started that one in 2010. So there's a good five year chunk of a different garden that you've never seen before. So this is what it looks like now, three years after I left it. And we haven't been able to find anyone to take the site on. Hopefully that will change, we'll see. But you can see now that it is absolutely covered in grass and weeds and dock. There's some plants here still that I, I planted and I, I didn't take. I thought that maybe an, another plot holder would come in and take care of them. This is a, a marshmallow plant that I put in. There's some rhubarb over here. There are even some flowers like these hyacinths that are persevering. Three years is all it took for my garden to go from a very productive place to this. It's really unfortunate. Now you might be asking, why did I move? I had a perfectly good garden, it was beautiful, but there were some things about it that I didn't like. And if I had been able to choose my aspect or my position originally instead of being assigned, then I probably wouldn't have chosen that spot. It's at the bottom of a hill, so there's lots of walking up and down, and it's very difficult when you're bringing manure onto your plot or taking crops up, so bags of potatoes. The taps, so the water taps are up here at the top of the fields. The car park is up here, the shed is up here. It was just quite difficult. And also another challenge that I had was that my old plot was on a boundary with the bottom of the field, which is just weeds. We have New Zealand flatworm here and so very few earthworms and the bottom of the field has just become a matted mess of grass and dockweed and lots of seeds that would blow constantly onto my old plot. And it was a bit of a, a struggle for me. So when this plot became available at the top of the field, I jumped at the opportunity. So I took this plot in 2015 and in that first year I had two allotment plots. This one here and the one at the bottom. And I spent that first year moving plants up here, moving my wood for raised beds and giving me time to gradually move up and avoid any stress. It wasn't as if I started this garden and from one day to the next it looked like this. It was a gradual process. In 2015, this plot looked nothing like it does today. When I took it over, it had been left to kind of tend to itself for a while. The potatoes that had been planted the previous year had never been dug up. There were weeds. There were positive things about it too. So there was a bed of raspberries that I have to this day, a rhubarb that I have to this day, but most everything else needed to be cleared. And so what I did was I laid black plastic, so polythene, over the entire plot. What the polythene does 
is it solarizes the soil, so it heats it up a little bit underneath. It also excludes light, so grass and weeds and anything underneath won't be able to photosynthesize, so they won't be able to grow and live. So over time, it will clear and kill off everything underneath. And 2015, that's what I did. So I, I put it down initially, and then I uncovered a third of it after a while, and I started growing on it. In spring 2016, I gave up my old plot for good. So all of my energy went into this one here. And early that year, I started putting in more raised beds. I started digging mushroom compost and manure into my current raised beds that are over here on this side. There was a lot of black plastic, a lot of wood, a lot of what looked like very messy items on the plot at that point, but they were all there for a purpose. So it was an ugly duckling in the making. Other things that I did that year was I built my wildlife pond and that became the hub of my plot. So I plopped it in the center and I have a little area where I grow wildflowers and some perennial edibles and it's my favorite part of the plot. Not a big productive area but something that is for me, for wildlife and is that hub to which I actually started designing the rest of my plot. 2016 was also the year of straw mulch for me, which was a bad idea. Now I'd read about using straw or hay mulch on American sites, and in some areas it's perfect. So what it does is you lay straw on the ground, it suppresses weeds, it keeps the ground underneath moist, and it helps plants and crops to flourish. Unfortunately, in Britain, it's a terrible idea. The straw gets wet completely from the top to the bottom at times, and it creates a haven for slugs to live underneath. So 2016 was slug Slugmageddon for me. <laughs> By 2017, so early 2017, my plot was starting to look a lot like it does today. So the vast majority of the black plastic was gone, beds were built, but one thing that I really struggled with in the year previous was weeds, and particularly weeds in the pathways. Not necessarily in the beds, but everywhere else. And I was spending a lot of time weeding them and also feeling really disheartened that it just looked terrible and that there were weed seeds blowing into my beds which is not ideal because you don't want weed seeds because it means more weeds and more weeding and more effort. So one of the best things that I've ever done was lay wood chip paths in my allotment garden. I no longer waste any time on my pathways other than to top up the wood chips on top. It looks tidy, it keeps weeds from sprouting, and I'm able to focus on what I want to do, grow edibles. There were a couple of other things that I did in 2017. First of all, I rebuilt my wildlife pond. The first year it did well, but the liner that I used sprung a leak. And so what I had to do really early on was to clear it out and rebuild it. And I actually have a video on how I did that in the case that you'd like to build your own as well. And it's held up to now, so it's doing really well. Another thing that I added that year, more towards the end of the year, was the blackberry trellis at the bottom of my, of my plot. So it creates even more space, vertical space, for me to grow another crop, a perennial berry with no thorns and the sweetest blackberries ever. Last year was an incredible growing year. My plot really came together. We had incredible weather. And I also started no-dig gardening properly last year. And what that is, is 
not digging the soil. It's pretty self-explanatory. And so I just really add a mulch of either garden compost or manure. It's a composted manure to the tops of my beds. And that's pretty much it. I plant directly into it and it has saved me so much time. My garden is now a pretty low maintenance place. I've got my beds as no dig. I've got my pathways covered. Got to the point where my garden was starting to become really low maintenance and what did I do but take over a new half plot and also buy a new house with a small back garden that I'm transforming into a veggie patch or part of it into a veggie patch this year. So it's quite the busy year for me ahead. I've already started some work on that. You can follow my progress with the home garden here. There's a playlist that's just the home garden and I'll be continuing to develop the allotment garden as well. Starting a garden is really exciting and I'm really quite excited for all of you that are thinking about doing it for the very first time because it is a discovery process and learning to work with the soil and to grow plants, whether they're ornamentals or edible crops, is one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done myself. If you've got any questions for me, leave them down as a comment below and I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.